This is skill building workshop number seven and this is video number three. We're going to be looking at taking our first measurements with the Keysight 4024 scope. I'm going to walk you through what I think are the most important steps before you even take a measurement. The first thing you should always do because you don't know who's been using the scope last and what settings they set it up in. There's a couple buttons over here on the upper right corner. One says auto scale. Never touch that button. There is no need for it but the one next to it says default setup is how you're gonna start using the scope. Whoever used the scope last may have had some setting and some orientation and instead of having to hunt through every one to check on it we're gonna push default setup and that's gonna bring the scope into a standard default um, setting that we can start with. First step. Second is quick orientation of the scope. This scope is a four channel scope and this is where we're gonna input each of the four channels so we can plot the voltage versus time on the screen. Channel 1 is yellow, you can see the color coding, 2 is green, 3 is blue, and 4 is red. This is where we plug them in, and here are where the individual controls are going to be for the vertical scale. All the channels and the voltages measured in each channel are always going to display on exactly the same time scale. There are three important sections of the scope for the controls that we're going to use over and over and over again for every single measurement. The first is the vertical scale, and that's going to be the pins over here. Each of the channels are going to be controlled by an um, individual set of knobs. The second section of the scope is horizontal. Get familiar with these two sections, the vertical controls, the horizontal controls. The horizontal control is going to adjust the time base. And then lastly, the third really important section is trigger. And this is the trigger section over here. Just a few little buttons and a few little knobs. Just be aware of those three sections, vertical control, horizontal, and the trigger. There are some other regions as well. And in later videos, we'll talk about using cursors and the measurement features and some of the reference features. But for now, we're going to ignore these. Do not use cursors or measurement functions for now. It's more important that you learn to read the values that are important, the figures of merit, from the front screen. And so we're going to spend the next few videos learning to set up the scope and read a measurement from the front screen. So that's the quick orientation. The other important thing to keep in mind is the screen is a touch screen. And so I can touch any of the buttons here on the or the, or the the values on the front screen and just be aware of um, that will change the recordings. If you don't want to do that and you just want to use the um, the buttons and the soft buttons down here there's a little button that says touch. If you touch that now it's not a touch screen anymore and you can point to the screen and touch things. You can still control the, um, the, the buttons and the knobs and you'll still have the soft buttons down here uh, but it won't be interactive. Personally, I like that touch feature, so I'm going to turn it on. And then lastly, before we plug anything in, just be aware of the soft buttons down here. And we can control them with the buttons, and you see them um, on the, the video side of the screen. Um, over here, here are the soft buttons down below. They are contextual. Depending on which button we push, those um, controls that we have down here are going to change. If I push one of the channels, then we'll have the opportunity to access some of the channels. If I push trigger, for example, it'll be a different set of controls. So just be aware that they vary depending on uh, what buttons that we're pushing. And in addition, we have displayed on the front screen a lot of additional information that can also be accessed by pushing. So I mentioned that, hey, you control the horizontal positioning for each of the channels over here. We can also do it over here by pushing the, the one button here that brings up the contextual menu. We can change the scale and the offset um, using the, the pull down menu on the screen for any of the channels that we want. Now we're ready to take our first measurement. And remember rule number nine. We're going to try to practice this over and over again whenever we're going to do a measurement simulation. And rule number nine is before you take a measurement or do a simulation, always anticipate what you expect to see. So we're actually going to um, use as our signal source the comp signal down here. The center pin is ground and we're going to connect to the black lead and the lug on the left hand side that's sticking out here is the signal pin. And before I connect it in, we anticipate what we expect to see. 
So if you've never measured the comp signal, you don't know what it is. Well, I've done it before, so I know that it's about a two and a half volt peak to peak square wave at about a kilohertz or so. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to connect it in, and now I'm going to use channel one, which is the yellow scale. So there's my screen. Now it's about two and a half um, uh, volts peak to peak, and you can kind of see, yep, that's a about what it is, but gosh, you know, it sure would be nice to be able to trigger it and see it. The trigger is the control for the scope that tells the scope when to display the response. If we have a periodic signal, if it's repeating, we can use the trigger to make it look stationary. It will always trigger the screen to display the data at the same level. And so the the first control that we're going to set up is the vertical. I'm going to expand outward on the vertical scale so we can see a little bit more. We can expand. Well, that's too much. It's saturated. I'm going to expand outward. So we're at one volt per division. We'll be always looking up here. It says one volt per division, uh, and and we can see the offset is zero. We have two knobs for vertical control. We have zooming in and out, that changes the scale, and we have position, moves it up and down. And you'll notice that the numbers on the screen change as I move it up and down. As I change the scale or I change the offset, you'll notice the value of the voltage at that level is changing. That's the label for the vertical axis. You know, for me personally, I want to be able to read the number off the front screen easily. I like seeing nice whole numbers here, so it's easy to figure out what the value is based on the position on the screen. And and look, as I change the offset, gosh, you know, the vertical scale is all over the place. Where it wears ground? Well, first you see this little carrot on the side. This carrot is pointed where zero volts is on the screen. Now I can move that around and move it up a little bit, but you know, still I like whole numbers. Here's the quick way of always centering ground in the middle. You push the offset button in and it always places ground in the center and that means that depending on what your scale factor is, look you have nice whole numbers as the vertical scale. And as I change the scale, and here we go, we have a nice clean um, set of values along the vertical axis there. So that's a good setting for the signal. It's um, uh, covered in the in the screen pretty well. But gosh, you know, it sure would be nice to see it stationary. And that's where the trigger comes in. The trigger will turn the display on always at the same level of the signal coming in. And for the trigger, that's the trigger controls right here. Um, the first button we're going to push is the trigger button. And this is going to tell us the most important features. First is the thing we're going to trigger on. Generally, for most of the applications, we're going to trigger the scope. We're going to turn the display on when the voltage coming in is at a certain DC value and increasing in the positive direction. And so the direction is increasing and decreasing. That's the slope. And I have right now, if you notice down here, I have an edge source for the trigger. If I push that soft button or the screen, lots of different ways of triggering it. 99% of the time we're going to use an edge to trigger. The source tells us which channel are we going to get the signal source from. It's channel 1 in this case. And then the slope tells us is it a going up signal or a going down signal. A rising or a falling. And I want a rising for now. But it's still not triggering because right now the scope is saying, hey, I want to trigger when the voltage coming in is rising and it reaches a certain minimum threshold. And that threshold I can control with the trigger level button over here. And you notice when I move it, I get a line, a horizontal line here that disappears after about uh, three seconds. If I haven't touched it, I touch it again, and there it is. That's the level the signal has to come in on. Now, there are, um, so the first button we pushed to set up the trigger, uh, the trigger button, it said, what kind of, of um, trigger type do you want? We said edge, the source was one, slope was um, rising. And then the second knob is the trigger level. Now, before we adjust the trigger level to get it to trigger well, there's one other control 
that is important and that's down here under mode and when I click mode we'll see that mode has two options auto and normal I'm going to use normal for now to describe what we're looking at normal says in normal mode the display is only going to trigger and we're only going to see the signal if the incoming voltage on the channel we've selected channel one is uh, turning on rising because we selected a rising edge and that voltage passes through this trigger level well as you can see for that snapshot of the signal here that signal in no time does it ever go through the level the levels down here and so the scope has not triggered and that's why I have a little that's why I have a little triggered question mark here it hasn't triggered and you can see the T means okay this is the trigger control the rising as channel 1 and the trigger level minus um, uh, 825 millivolts I, I move that trigger level and you can see that trigger level changes when I adjust the trigger level so that now a signal coming in will pass through that trigger level now the scope will trigger and every time that signal comes in it is displaying that uh, waveform time and time again now it's really hard to tell um, uh, because it's exactly the same signal every single time but that signal is changing it is constantly the scope is being triggered and we're displaying a new set of data coming in really hard to see that um, ex unless you look really closely you know maybe over here you can see a little bit of the noise now it's kind of a faint outline it's not as bright as I would like to see and if I want to make that the, um, the the trace a little brighter I come over here to this button that says intensity push that button in and now I can make it a little bit brighter and now you can see yeah it that data is changing we're getting a repetitive signal and every time that signal coming in crosses this voltage threshold it's displayed on the front screen and so so for repetitive signals uh, we're going to be able to make them look stationary that's the important value of the trigger now I said there are two modes normal and auto in normal it's behaving normally it is only going to trigger when that signal coming in is a rising signal and crosses that threshold for where the trigger is located and it's going to display the data on the front screen exactly in the center where that little caret is at the top which is time t equals zero I can adjust the horizontal position I can zoom in or out changing the the time per division and I can also move it horizontally and shift it over a little bit and again I like to see nice whole numbers down at the bottom for time per division if you've moved it around and can't find where's the time t equals zero you push the position button in automatically brings time t equals zero to the center and depending on what resolution you want to see do you want to see that rising edge do you want to see the the duty cycle do you want to see the period that's going to tell you how you're going to adjust the uh, time per division in order to see the feature that you care about in this particular case lastly with the trigger I mentioned the two modes of operation there is normal and auto normal means I'm only going to trigger the scope when I get a valid trigger signal that is when it's going up as I've set it from channel one and the signal passes through this threshold that I've set that's what happens in normal mode however if you get it started and your triggers down here then um, you're not necessarily going to see anything on the screen there's nothing going to be displayed it's not going to be triggering because you don't know it but your trigger level is way down here and your signal is way up there and so to assure that you'll see something on the front screen that the scope will trigger there's a special mode called auto and when we push the mode we get the soft keys down at the bottom and if we change the mode from normal to auto that basically says okay I'm gonna trigger the scope in normal mode as long as I get a valid trigger signal coming in as long as that voltage is above that threshold I set but if I wait 50 milliseconds and I haven't seen a valid trigger signal I'm gonna just trigger it anyway just so you can see what's on the screen but that 50 millisecond time period that's kind of random that is there's no synchronization
from buffer to buffer what that signal looks like. And so there's no synchronization from cycle to cycle unless I move the trigger level up so we get a valid trigger and now it's operating in normal mode even though it says auto. If it doesn't get a valid trigger it goes into auto mode and just shows you whatever's there just so you can see something. So play around with these three controls. We adjust the vertical scale, we can zoom in and out, we move it up and down, we offset it, bring it back to zero, we adjust the time base on the horizontal, we zoom out and in, we shift it horizontally, change its position. If we want to get back to zero, nice whole numbers, push that button in, and then the trigger level, we set the trigger for the source, the type of slope. If you want to see the falling edge, we can push that down and see the falling edge. That's how we see the falling edge. And depending on what uh, feature in the signal that we want to see, we're going to zoom in or out and we're going to look at either the rising edge or um, the falling edge and we're going to adjust that trigger level in order to see the valid signal. So play with those three sets of controls. And so finally, now that we know how to adjust the controls, let's take a look at what we're measuring. So the first thing is the vertical. Yep, it's two and a half volts is the peak to peak value. It's a square wave. The rise time that we see here for this signal um, is, let's see, it's about 200 nanoseconds of division and it's something over about a division, about 200 nanoseconds as the rise time of the signal in this particular setup. And we'll see a little later that, you know, just because we measure that rise time in a particular setup doesn't mean that's the intrinsic rise time of the source. And I'll show you some of the details of that um, a little later. We also see that we adjust the scale and look, the time for an up is a half a millisecond. The time for a down is a half a millisecond. You can see this repetitive signal that is um, a period of one millisecond. That means it's one kilohertz. And now lastly, before we quit and before you have a chance to practice with this, one last detail. This cable that I've got is considered a 1x cable. That is, there's no attenuation in it. Whatever comes out of the tip that flows to the bottom and that's what the amplifier on the inside of the scope sees, the voltage between the signal and the return. We want to make sure that what we see displayed on the front screen is also the tip voltage without any attenuation factor. And so we look over here under the channel settings and you'll notice it says, oh, there is a one to one. If I touch that, we have the option of changing the attenuation factor. Later, when we use the 10X probe, we'll use 10 to one. You wanna be really careful, and this is one of those issues, depending on who used the scope last, you wanna be really careful to make note of that attenuation setting. If we're using a 1x cable, as we are here, but this is set for 10 to 1, the scope is going to display for you what it thinks is at the tip based on that attenuation. And if I told it it's attenuating by a factor of 10, then it's going to take the value it measures here and it's going to scale it by a factor of 10, saying, oh, well, you really have 10 times whatever I measure here because of the 10x attenuation, you really have 10 times that over here at the tip. And it's going to show you 25 volts, which of course is not correct. And so you want to make sure, based on the probe you're using, that you have the correct attenuation value here. And so there's our one-to-one -one attenuation. And now we're reading the two and a half volts um, at the tip that's correct. So be sure to play with that. Get comfortable with all the controls. You don't need anything else other than the coax cable that has the BNC and the mini grabbers to measure the comp signal. And then you can play with the vertical controls, the horizontal controls, and the trigger functions.